former Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren with the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thanks so much for being here, Senator. So Donald Trump's pretty close to winning the Republican yeah. uh, nomination to get enough delegates to, to clinch it, despite what happened January 6th, yeah. 91 criminal counts, yeah. being found liable of sex abuse yeah. uh, and defamation. Despite all of that, this, this race has not really been competitive on the Republican side. What do you make, it's two-parter for you, Professor, what do you make of, A, the fact that uh, Donald Trump does seem to have this clinched up and has the whole time, and B, that even with all those vulnerabilities, it's competitive, if not Trump in the lead against Biden? So let's do the first part. Donald Trump's supporters are Donald Trump's supporters. You know, ask them. They still, many of them are election deniers. They're in with Donald Trump all the way. But here's the part that I think is really important. Donald Trump really hasn't done anything in the last three years to try to expand the number of people to join the Trump family. And I think what this is going to come down to is going to just be a comparison. We're already there. And we're going to have two people who both have been president and who will have records to run on. So Donald Trump, basically four years as president, did two things. One, he got an extremist Supreme Court that overturned Roe versus Wade. And two, he got the biggest tax cut in a zillion years, $2 trillion, mostly sucked up by millionaires, billionaires, and giant corporations. Joe Biden, in three years, has managed to cut costs for working families. So now there's $35 insulin. Four million people have seen their student loan debt canceled. Um, and he has also brought more fairness to the tax code. First time, we have a 15% minimum corporate tax on these billionaire corporations and largest uh, climate package in the history of the world. So I think what they've done is going to be a big part, certainly not all of it, but a big part of how this election is going to shape up. Senator, you, one of the things you just said was that Donald Trump hasn't done anything to expand his base or his electorate. Um, what they are trying to do in the Trump campaign is very much encroach on traditionally Democratic voters black voters, Hispanic voters. Um, some of the things that you just said are the arguments that, of course, we expect the Biden campaign to make going forward. There is some frustration in Democratic quarters that those kinds of arguments aren't coming more um, specifically and loudly from the president himself. So I think what you're saying is the president needs to brag more. I'm asking you. I, well, I think he should brag more. I think he's got plenty to brag about. Thursday's going to be the State of the Union. I hope he does a lot of bragging. I also hope that he talks about the things he wants to do, like universal child care and housing, the things we need to work on. But here's the thing I think most of all. I hope that what we're going to see is just Joe Biden being Joe Biden. Because Joe Biden ultimately has got a good heart. I know who Joe Biden fights for. Joe Biden gets out there every day and fights for people like the diabetic who has gone from paying $200 a month to $35 a month for the person getting crushed by student loan debt, the public school teacher who just can't pay off those debts. He's out there fighting for those people. He's fighting for people who wanted a job and now have got a job. That's Joe Biden. Trump, who does he fight for? Donald Trump, so, first and last. I don't think I'm giving you any news you don't know, but there are a lot of warning signs going off on how effectively Joe Biden is going to be able to rebuild the coalition uh, they got him elected in 2020. A lot of progressives, uh, a lot of Muslim Americans and Arab Americans in Michigan, certainly, but not only them, other progressives upset with the way uh, he supported Netanyahu during this war. Um, I know that a lot of Democrats are really worried about those voters, 100,000 in Michigan who voted uncommitted, not voting for Trump, but either staying at home or going third party, going for Cornell West. Uh, uh, going for Jill Stein, going for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, how worried are you, and what do you say to those voters to get them to come home? So I want to start in a different place, because for me, this isn't about politics. This is ultimately about doing what's right. I understand that there are extraordinarily passionate feelings about what has happened, what has happened in Gaza, what has happened in Israel. People feel very engaged and very invested. And the key is that we're all trying to drive to the same place. And that is, we need a permanent, peaceful solution in the Middle East. Look, we got four things we need to do, and we need to do them 
right now. We need those hostages returned. We need a ceasefire. We need to open up so that there is plenty of humanitarian aid flowing in. And we need to push leadership so that it's moving toward a permanent peace. That is a two-state solution. That is two places for two peoples who can live in peace with dignity, um, security, and who can have self-determination for their futures. And as much as wrong, there's a sliver of hope that this moment opens up that other countries in the region are ready to push. The United States, we need to push hard and we need to push those parties toward a peaceful solution. That's where we want to get. We need to push harder to get there. Senator Elizabeth Warren from the Great Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thanks, Thanks so much for being here.